Hello everybody, I'm the Hemp the Hemp Game Channel. Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. It is a Kaiser Redux edition where today we are back in the good old United States of America as we're playing as a constitutional American Republic. So let's hop on in and see what we can get up to. Okay, so here we are. It says 1937 already. I have played to the point where the American Civil War is underway. I am just moving my troops to a new defensive position. I am going to be surrendering like four, four states to the CSA and AUS. Main issue being the fact that they're actually at peace with each other right now, so it's it's not ideal. So I'm just going to fall back behind the river and into some mountainous terrain just to hold them back, and that way I can build up my army. Because mostly, we're just losing civilian factories, which at this point we don't really need. As long as I have military factories, we're A-OK. -okay. So my plan basically for falling back is just to hold until the AUS and the CSA end up at odds with each other, because it will eventually happen. We just need to hold on long enough, and we will probably, due to the route we're going down today, have to deal with a certain revolt down here in the south, so we will have to get some troops ready for dealing with that as quickly as possible as well, but we'll see what happens. Right now we have got a bit of a deficit of equipment, but I'm hoping, because we're going to be on the defensive, we won't go through much equipment very quickly. Okay, so here we are. We are in the defensive position that I'm wanting now, so hopefully we will be able to survive the onslaught from the CSA and the AUS. It's a very good defense position we have got going for us. My plan will eventually be to push, hopefully, into the USA and go from there, but we'll see what happens. We're just going to defend for the time being and try and deal with this deficit of equipment we currently have. So William Joseph Simmons and the NDWL are calling for a special convention to be held, and ultimately what will happen is Simmons will eventually be in power. And there we go, Simmons has now been elected as the leader of our nation, and with Simmons now in power we need to work down the Invisible Empire, which will eventually lead to him passing away. And at that point, there'll be a little power struggle for whoever takes over. And obviously, we're going to be going down the Lord route. So we're going to have Herbert W. Armstrong take the reins. Canada has just announced that they are supporting the federal government today. That's fine. We'll see how well that works out for them. Okay, it's finally happened. I wasn't didn't realise it was going to cut my front, though. Uh, that's a little bit of a, a nuisance. But that's fine. We will deal with them. Thankfully, they only have... About 20 divisions max, so we could probably divert some additional troops to this for the time being. Okay, we've we've re-secured our territory there, which is good. Uh, just need everyone to move back to the front line. That means we've got 13 divisions as well to kind of pun elsewhere. Which I'm thinking I'm going to shove some of them there for the time being. Okay, I'm thinking once we've got things a little bit more secured, um, I think I might try and take out the USA and maybe even push to Baton Rouge at least, because that way it kind of evens out the front a little bit, plus we could maybe take New Orleans. Okay, so we're holding on by the skin of our teeth in some sections. I've had to reinforce them with uh, the troops under Wil Wicklife Draper, who's kind of split in two right now, just fall back lines just to kind of hold together our weak parts. I'm trying to get Lindbergh to somewhat push forward here and maybe deal a blow to the United States of America. Well, the good thing is we are taking the fight to both the CSA and the AUS here. They have lost 900k combined. Okay, this is actually going somewhat quite well for us now against the uh, federal government. Just trying to sneak our way up, hopefully behind Richmond since that is where a good portion of our troops actually are currently pinned down. And we've got the federal government where we want them actually now, because they're being aggressive against us, which is ultimately going to be their downfall. Well, this is interesting. We are in range of the capital. So we'll, we'll see if we can actually take that, because obviously that will kill off the United States, and the federal government will be no longer with us. I believe I just noticed that the Russians went to war with Ukraine. Oh, they're independent. Ah. Ah, right, okay, that would explain it, but Russia is at war with the Third International because Belarus joined them. Oh, well, okay, Germany and Russia's going to be fighting side by side today. We might actually be able to take the capital. It's not an ideal place for pushing from they went to last stand. Right, that'll kill off some of those divisions, so continue that push. And the other thing I'm hoping that the collapse of federal government's going to do is it's finally going to kick off a war between these two, because right now... We're pretty much facing the entire might of the American Union state because they're just at war with us. And the same, basically, for the CSA as well, except from that little front they have with the 
federal government, but they're all... Look at the stacks that's on the border. Well, Simmons should be dying very, very soon because we're about to do his last focus, which is what we need to complete before uh, he dies. So basically, should be too much longer until we're getting a new leader again. Yes. Perfect. We've finally pushed through where I kind of wanted to push to. So we've shortened the front a little bit. Right, we're sitting on an absolute truckload of infantry equipment, so I think we'll stop building four. And we're just going to get a couple of batches of 12 out right now. Okay, so we've got a new army starting under Booth. We'll just have them in Atlanta, and we'll have them exercising for the time being as well. And we'll just make sure that every new troop goes under his command. Well, that's not good. Simmons has just suffered a heart attack and is in a coma, whilst uh, the old and new... Clans are um, gathering their allies, so yeah, this is not looking good. We might have a wee bit of instability for a little bit. Oh well, there's confirmation. Simmons has passed away. Well, 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 who is going to take the reins now? So DC Stevenson has just approached Patton and offered him and the military a more direct command over the nation, utilising the intelligence services under their command as well. Um... Patton is not stupid though. He is well aware that this offer has only truly been offered by Stevenson because he desires closer ties to the military via his ally Effinger. And Patton knows that by accepting this offer, he is greatly going to empower Stevenson. So, yeah, um, I don't think so. Effinger is the option we're going to be choosing here because I do not want Stevenson taking over the nation and we will see why in the next couple of events. So General Patton has just received a letter which within has carefully documented the crimes that DC Stevenson has conducted against both women and children, and cannibalism is involved in those crimes. So yes, Stevenson is not a very nice guy. In fact, he's pretty much a monster. So Patton has the choice here. Show the evidence at the next gathering of the old Democratic Party, or not. And damn right, he is. He is going to arrest Stevenson. He's going in guns blazing. And there we go. DC Stevenson, the monster that he is, has been executed. The military has basically stormed one of his speeches, detained him. And then, you know, Armstrong and Evans done their thing where they basically accused Stevenson of his crimes in front of the people. And Effinger was detained as well. And Patton eventually gained control of the situation found Stevenson guilty before having him hung to the nearest tree. So yes, we now have a choice on what to do with Effinger, and I believe we should let him live. Hiram Wesley Evans is attempting to sell himself as a reformist who is going to bring about a new, more stable republic, under his rule of course. However, he is busy right now trying to deal with the remnants of the old clan, who of course were under the control of Stevenson. So he's busy dealing with that. So whilst he's busy with that, Armstrong is trying to essentially take power for himself and is trying to bring about basically a coup. And Patton has a choice here on whether we're going to do Armstrong's bidding or not. And we will follow the president regardless. So we are going to help out Armstrong. Wonderful. We have managed to cut off some of the federal government's troops here. Which, of course, is very advantageous for us. We do actually have another 12 divisions out and ready for action. So we will send them straight to the front to help out. Well, there we go. Our political instability is no more as we finally appointed a successor for Simmons. Armstrong has taken power. And with Armstrong in power, we're now going to go down a very interesting journey. Which will see us go down and do Unite the Lost Tribes. Which lets us take out Canada and gain cores, as well as take out the Union of Britain, and also get cores on them as well. So yes, it is going to be a very cursed little run that we're going to be doing now. Let us rejoice under the worldwide kingdom of God. Yep, that's not cursed in the slightest. Federal government's in a spot of bother here, they're just about to lose a lot of troops. We've just gained the Warriors of Elijah, which gives us some nice wee bonuses. Weekly manpower of plus 20. Well, that will eventually stack up, to be fair. With us now being around the river, there's not much that the federal government can really do to hold back our assaults, really. I would just also like to point out that we have killed 5.82 million troops. Okay, we have started to try and push 
them back, the CSA that is. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, the second Velkrieg is now underway, so all support from the Reichspact and the Third International for all of us over here in America is now going to obviously cease to exist. Um, the Entente will soon follow, so the federal government's going to lose a lot of troops that are helping defend Washington. Ah, there we go, the kind of France has declared war on the commune, so the Entente is going to war, which means they have lost their support. Well, Germany is fighting a two-front war for once today. Russia has actually invaded, so Savinkov's actually... Oh, my days, he's, he's doing something all right, but it's a bit of a blinking mess. Oh, my days, finally, the United States of America are no more. Oh, finally! It only took them till 1940. That's the longest blinking peace period I've ever seen between the pair of them. Oh, my days, we're finally busting through. Now, this is probably going to result in us losing a lot of men, but we've killed 9 million of them, so I've, I think we're still going to show them how it's done at the end, by the end of this. Oh, yes, the syndicalists are in a spot of bother over in New York, and hopefully supply is going to be coming soon over here. Well, the troops have supply again, so they're uh, starting to actually push quite nicely. Oh, my heavens. We're... That's, uh, yeah, we've got a kind of big death stack on them right at this point. The amount of divisions we've got pushing is ridiculous. Chicago is right there. They have stacked a living crap of it, but doesn't look like it's going to be any match for us. Oh my days, Chicago's only got one tank division left in it. Come on, yes, surely, surely that's the CSA gone. Nope, they're not. Really? It's all up on these divisions breaking New York at this point. Oh no. Nope, they're dead. They're dead. They are dead. Oh my days. Well, the great push forward has begun. The American Union state will meet our wrath. And so will the PSA as well, because we are going straight into them afterwards. Well, so far, I think we are absolutely decimating them, really. Um, we are pushing in and nothing's really stopping us. In fact, New Orleans is gone. Now, the real question is, do I accept peace with the Pacific States of America so that they disband all their militia troops and then have zero divisions left? Or do I just keep going? I guess we'll see. I'll judge it from when we actually start engaging with their troops, because they've not been fighting for flipping donkeys now. Austin, Texas is about to fall, and with it, the American Union state. Oh, beautiful. So the possible ceasefire has been suggested to me. I did say I was going to reject it, but it's going to be a very costly affair to deal with the Pacific states with their 100-odd divisions going through the mountains. So I think we meet in Denver, and then once the peace deal's gone through, we just instantly start justifying on them, and we'll just go straight back in. Wait, what? Any states west of the Mississippi River shall be ceded to Pacific States of America? What? That's like all of this. No. No, 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 no. There'll be no ceasefire. Oh well, okay, that's that's fine by me. I've not been giving them any... Uh, this is the Mississippi over here, if my geography is correct. I've not been giving them all of this. I have more states than I do. The cheeky buggers. Okay, we have burst through. Um, one concerning thing is the fact we have zero manpower. Um, which, that obviously, not good. But, yeah, we've we've lost double what they've lost so far. But, hey-ho, we are pushing quite hard. And I'm hoping it's going to result in good tidings for us. Oh, could we be witnessing the downfall of Sacramento? I don't think so just yet, but we have... Pushed up to Los Angeles and San Francisco is in our sights. They've cracked our code, but who cares in the slightest? Because they've been cracked wide open and we've killed them. So yes, give me that land. Constitutionalist victory in the Civil War. Happy days. Yeah, there we go. The end of the American Civil War. Political aftermath of the Civil War and economic aftermath. Yay. Yay, the Legation Council's restored our voting rights. Thank you so much. Well, New England refused to unite with us. Well, you're going to get absolutely destroyed. But Alaska has re decided to rejoin us. Welcome back to the Union. Yeah, Joe, you know I should probably spend a lot of time just dealing with the reconstruction, especially getting down to rebuilding America decisions so I can actually gain cores. Because manpower is gone right now. It's it's gone. Germany is almost the war, and the Republic of Czechoslovakia is very bloody thick. That's not good. The Great Migration. I, I don't want to lose 100,000 manpower because I don't have 100,000 to lose. Um, quickly, let's stop them from leaving. It sounds very nice of us to do that. Let's stop them. Well, here we go. The economy is sorted. Thank heavens for that. That's one less problem to worry about. The political aftermath can 
probably be fully dealt with soon as well. Um, kind of on that research slot, but I think we'll divert our attention back down here and we will just deal with the political aftermath. Well, I've done expand our circle and there's literally no options for me, so it does look like we're just in the circle of the constitution by ourselves for the time being, and oh my days, the Italians have joined the Russians. Oh my days, you won't believe what's just happened in Europe. So the Commune of France is gone. Czechoslovakia went and joined the Eurasian bloc. It's a massive ass faction now. It's huge. Just gonna casually declare war on the uh, the Union of Britain. Don't know how that faction is so big. I think it's just because most of the people have been taken out already. Um, yeah, hello Russia. I would like to ask for access. Do you not want to be friends? We could be friends. Oh dear, we're gonna have to act quickly because Russia has naval invaded the Union of Britain. Yeah, sadly the Russians are pushing very well by themselves. Which was to be expected, really. Wait, what? Oh my days, I liberated Ireland. Well, not so shocking turn of events. Uh, wait, what the hell? The king... <laughs> That's hideous. That's actually hideous. What the hell? Anyways. Oh my days, even Canada managed to pinch some land. Canada got England. What? Well, on the plus side, at least I got uh, Scotland. So when I go to war with Canada, I'll just be uh, taking all this land very quickly from them. Yeah, I bet the Canadians really weren't expecting that from the signs of their border. Um, we'll also quickly just mop up our land over there in England. Yeah, there goes New England. <laughs> Hello, everybody. That is I. We haven't even really sorted out our infantry templates, really. In fact, our best troops are actually over here. Well, welcome back, New England. Yeah, I was going to say, I would assume I'm at peace with the Entente, and indeed I am for the time being. I will be coming back for them, though. Because obviously I want to unite all of America. There goes Canada. Fantastic. Let me just annex all of that and annex our navy. Holy moly. Minus 20% consumer goods. The minus 17% recruitment population is not great, but cool. Are you a madman, Albania? Are you actually mad? Why have you declared war on the Russian faction? All right. Sorry, Mexico, but uh, sadly, it's time for you to meet our wrath, even though we've not got any manpower whatsoever, really. Well, naval invasion's already off to a good start for Lindbergh. We have just cored Canada, which has given us 350k manpower. Let's go ahead and core all of the Union of Britain now, or what was the Union of Britain. Mexico City is about to fall. You know, Britain has just been cored. Sadly, I cannot probably get Germany at this point. I'm not taking on the, the whole Russian faction. Wait, sorry, what? We will become known as New... I don't even know how to pronounce that. But I get annex war goals on all the Entente, basically. Okay. Let's let's do that. Let's do it. Oh my days. <laughs> uh, oh, this is getting more and more cursed. There goes Mexico, so let's go ahead and annex all them, annex Central America, annex the terrible fleets. Sorry, Costa Rica. I know you've only got like one division or something. Two divisions, but yeah. Time for you to die. Well, the main issue we're going to face was getting across the canal, but thankfully we have managed to do that. And we have defeated Panama now. Wait, what? I can press for Greenland? Well, why not? I'm sure the Danes will happily give me that. <laughs> Wait, what? You're kidding me on. Um, why is the Netherlands at war with the Kingdom of France and beating them? And, oh, they're also at war with Liberia. W well done, well done, France. Wait, what? The German Empire lives on? Oh, God, where are they? Oh, yep, that, that, that makes total sense. They're on Diego Garcia, which is south of the Maldives. There goes Colombia. Annex them. Oh, Venezuela is now dead. Fantastic, let me annex all their stuff. And the Kingdom of France is definitely on its way out. Tunisia has risen up now, so yeah, bye bye to France. Yep, sorry Denmark, but you are on the way out, boys. You're on the way out. All they had to do was give me literally a block of ice. And they refused to, and now because of that, they're dying. Sorry, Ireland, you're all core territory for me, so I'm afraid you're gonna die. Well, there goes Ireland. Welcome, cores, welcome. Well, I have to say, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. We could go ahead and, you know, take out South Africa, and I, I, I would not be taking on the Australian Confederation anyways, because of 
Wait, what? What? The French Kingdom is a puppet of Germany. How did that happen? How, how did that actually happen? Germany's way down in here. And they have a puppet in front. Okay, I don't understand it. Um, yeah, I think that's a good place to leave. I could continue and maybe try and take down the Russians, but that is going to be just, just, just no thank you. No thank you. Um, I shall leave it here. What a cursed game, but I thoroughly enjoy playing with uh, Armstrong. Had some pretty nice, unique national spirits as well, and a pretty, it was a pretty cursed route. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy it, and I shall be back next week for another video. Until then, do take care, cheer bye, and then out.